What are hoof distortions and how do they occur? Hoof distortions occur when structures grow beyond their normal or optimal length. The extra growth that extends beyond the level of the functional sole and is no longer supported by the sole can be subject to extra load and stresses that cause structures, especially the hoof wall, to bend, curl, twist, stretch, and break. Hoof distortions cause the hoof capsule to lose its parallel relationship to the coffin bone. Normal or non-distorted. Toe and heel ratio around the center of the foot is 50-50 or slightly more behind than in front. Dorsal wall is basically straight from the hairline to the ground surface. Minor distortions. There is slightly more mass ahead of the center of the foot than behind. Dorsal wall has a slight deviation just below the hairline and is then straight from there down. Extra toe length is primarily due to normal hoof wall growth. Moderate distortions. There is more mass ahead of the center of the foot than behind. Dorsal wall has a deviation just below the hairline and the wall gradually flares from there down. Sole, lamina, and hoof wall are stretched. Severe distortions. There is a lot more mass ahead of the center of the foot than behind. Dorsal wall has a deviation just below the hairline and the wall continues to flare from there down. Sole, lamina, and hoof wall are stretched. Common pathologies directly and indirectly caused by hoof distortions. Navicular syndrome, bone spurs, ring bone and arthritis, coffin joint disease, lesions of the collateral ligaments, impar ligament, deep digital and extensor flexor tendon. Basic guidelines for treating and preventing common hoof distortions. Use the functional sole plane for determining dorsal palmar and mediolateral hoof balance. The hoof wall should be trimmed close to the level of the sole and equal on both sides. The shoe or trim should be balanced equally 50-50 around the widest part or center of the foot. Heels should end close to the back of the frog and a slight heel first landing should be encouraged. The frog should contact the ground and good dirt compaction should be allowed to exist in the foot to encourage load sharing.